head into some world news. Uh, the CEO of IBM, a major corporation here in the United States, has officially announced through their CEO that the company will no longer be hiring for about 30% of non-customer relations jobs. Uh, this equates to about roughly at least uh, seven to 8,000 jobs, more, more closer to, I would say, 8,000. Um, with AI, they're replacing them with AI over slowly over the next five years. I've been telling you guys this was going to happen. It seems like every other day there is more and more and more and more advancements with the AI. I mean, we've been seeing them take up jobs for years with the self checkouts, um, and all kinds of other different things. Now in um, Dallas, I think it was, or or specifically maybe Fort Worth, anywhere somewhere in Texas, there is a fully automated AI, no human contact McDonald's. Um, there are you know AI programs teaching students in China. Now we have, you know, them taking over more and more and more jobs. It is estimated that more than 300 million jobs are going to be lost to AI in the recent future, which is more and more jobs taking away from humankind. So this is very, very interesting and scary. Like, have you guys not seen Terminator? Do you guys not know how this ends for us? Where is Sarah Connors? Where, where's Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, the struggle is real. Um, speaking of the struggle, the God, the, the scientist behind AI, known as the godfather of AI, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, has recently quit Google and, and he actually says that he regrets his life work with developing AI. Um, he says he regrets it due to the risks to humanity. Uh, see, I, I'm not crazy, y'all. You guys, people want to think I'm crazy, but... Your girl sees what's happening here. Um, he says he fears it will become more dangerous in the future with bad actors exploiting advanced systems for nefarious purposes that will be difficult to prevent without precautions that take place. Um, this is very, very disturbing. So basically, people that are in charge of different AIs, be it prompt managers, uh, people with overhead like governments and and other scientists and uh, and everything else, you know, have you ever heard that phrase? Uh, my my grand used to say it. Uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. This seems like a perfect case for that. Uh, I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. There's lash tech places and, and other beauty salon places where robots are doing stuff. Um, robots are starting to take over, you know, different types of stuff with doctors. Like, we're seeing this everywhere. Everywhere. This is not just, you know, teaching or whatever. We're even seeing chat GPT. Um, AI, uh, you know, programs actually taking over and predicting the stock market better than Wall Street financial analysts. Um, they have apparently been able to predict stock market moves better than some of the top Wall Street analysts with abilities to decode FED statements, so Fed statements. Um, I mean, the writing's on the wall, guys. I, I, I think it's safe to say that. So if you're wondering what kind of career is going to give you a lot of financial stability within the next 10 to 50 years and more... I would start looking at prompt managers for AI, which have right now been quoted at almost $300,000 a year. So your take home, depending on what state you live in, could be anywhere from uh, 155 to almost 200 K depending on what state you live in and what happens with inflation in the next few months and taxes and the debt ceiling. But I mean, $300,000, you know, that's, that's not nothing to sneeze at. Uh, but this is really terrifying. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. I mean, the CEO of IBM, uh, Google says it's going to be teaching kids, you know, reading and all kinds of other stuff within the next 18 months. That's according to Bill Gates with, with Google. Um, you know, then you've got the godfather of AI, you know, just quitting Google saying, you know, I regret this. I, I'm scared for humanity. Then you got chat GPT being a better financial analyst than some career, you know, defining analyst on Wall Street. 300 million jobs being taken away. That That's a lot. Not to mention the fact that on this podcast, we've talked about some stuff that's in some scary name brand waters, some stuff that's in your food, on your produce, in your homes. Well, now it's in our clothes. Um, apparently, I... This makes me so sad. Like, on the inside, I am crying a little bit because I adore Lululemon. And I'm not a type of person that likes to pay $100 a legging for leggings, okay? I am not that kind of person. I paid $10 for this and $10 for this, okay? I'm just not that type of person. But here's the thing. I will buy leggings that pass the bend over test. And girls, girls that are not trashy and who care... You guys know what I'm talking about when I say the bend over test, okay? So don't even come at me. 
Um, and, and so Lululemon usually passed, like nine times out of 10, passed the bend over test. So I would invest in that product, meaning I would gladly pay money for that because it's a quality product, or so I thought. Well, recent videos have been circulating on social media that are a big cause for concern. Here's why. And if you're a guy, this also goes for you too, because some of these, th these things have also been found in men's polyester um, underwear and then in Lululemon uh, in their leggings and their sports bras and in other fashion manufacturers. Um, there was a recent study that came out about a very... Um, uh, popular fashion brand because of how uh, cost efficient they are at duplicating and making dupes of other brands. Well, apparently they have some of the highest levels of lead in their clothing and women buy this stuff all the time. I even have some of their stuff. So I was like, oh, no. Well, here is another case of that. Um, apparently these uh, Lululemon's leggings, sports bras, and other things actually contain forever chemicals, which are BPAs and PFAs, uh, which are very absorbent and they can absorb through the skin, especially in the crotch region of the leggings where they make direct contact with uh, compromised skin. Um, this is also the same for certain uh, fabric softeners and dryer sheets, which have been linked to um, cancer causing chemicals and other chronic illnesses due to high carcinogenic and neurotoxic ingredients. Um, I found a breakdown of some of the stuff that you're going to want to look at. So I guess the moral of this particular story, aside from the AI scare, is start reading your clothing labels a lot more closely, not just to see how to wash them, but to see what's in them. This was so heartbreaking and terrifying. So here we go. I actually did a breakdown. Um, many of the fabric softeners and dryer sheets, they're chemicals to help, you know, de-static and make sure your clothes aren't staticky. And the fabric softeners are to keep your fabric soft, smelling fresh. And the chemicals are d designed for a slow release over time, which means they slowly absorb into your system the more you wear the clothes and the more you wash the clothes. Um, so many of these items actually contain benzyl acetate, which has been linked to pancreatic cancer. Um, then you have benzyl alcohol, which is an upper respiratory irritant, which is, um, very dangerous for people like me with like, uh, restrictive lung disease and, and many other ailments. Um, then you have ethanol, which is, um, is, is a contributor to central nervous system disorders. So if you don't know what those are, I did write down a brief list. There are many more, but uh, some central nervous system disorders include things like Alzheimer's, Bell's palsy, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, MS, Parkinson's disease, and more. Um, and then you also had uh, chloroform. Talk about monster, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and others. Now we've got chloroform in some of our stuff, um, which is a neurotoxin as well as a well-known carcinogenic. Um, then you also have uh, limonene, L-I-M-O-N-E-N-E, -E, which is an also, it's also known as a carcinogen. And you also, um, so yeah, like this stuff was found in fabric softeners in some clothes. I'm not saying the Lululemon clothes, but some clothes. Um, but the Lululemon stuff did have BPAs and PFAs. So, ah, oh my gosh. Um, and then, you know, you have certain fabric softeners and dryer sheets that have all of this stuff that causes pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, Bell's palsy, MS, Parkinson's, and more, um, and other, all, all kinds of other ailments. So alternatives, I looked up some alternatives because I don't want, I don't like to just bludgeon you guys with bad news. <laughs> Apparently wool dryer balls can actually be, um, an alternative to using dryer sheets. And then for certain fabric softeners, instead of using fabric softeners, you can potentially use things like vinegar or baking soda in your wash. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to try that, let me know. Um, yeah, my gosh, like, my gosh, we need to start checking what's in, you know, our cosmetics, in our sunscreen, in our food, in our water, in our air quality, in our clothes, in our everything. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. I think we need to do a better job, in, you know, just we need to do better. <laughs>